like it's everyone seems expendable. Are you guys just afraid that you're gonna get killed off every episode? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I do have to hand it to you because, you know, in this genre, the African American character is not known to make it very oh, much. Yes. There's an episode of her scene. Can I just shake your hand and congratulate you for making it to season three? You're defying the, the odds, my friend. Yeah. All right, um, I mean, I'm usually the one killing them off. Yeah. <laughs> Would you cast me in something else, please, for a while? At least for a, a season or so? He just wants to play the dad in a romantic comedy. <laughs> Uncle, Uncle Daddy, I'll be here. That's the problem. If you're playing Uncle Daddy, I don't think that's the right kind of movie. <laughs> So, you know, obviously, I think, I, I, uh, I think that, I think it's definitely safe to say that this by far is the most amazing creature effects we've seen out of any, anything zombie related. Would you guys agree? Yeah. Um, just from that first episode when we see the torso zombie on, do you guys ever actually get, like, literally freaked out on stage, like, on set? Yeah, but, um, you know, the good thing about how Greg does it is you, you see, like, the sad, sick, dying person behind the monster. So, I mean, you know, in between scenes that are, you know, eating Twizzlers and smoking cigarettes, but, <laughs> but, you know, on the day when they say, actually, you see this dying, sick thing, dude, that's, that's fucking creepy. Yeah. So what? <laughs> So, uh, what, do you, what do you think it is about, about The Walking Dead? I mean, I think we all have our opinions about what makes The Walking Dead so special and what separates it from uh, the rest of the genre. What, what do you guys individually think makes it so unique? Daryl! Uh, <laughs> trying to get serious. I have to figure out. Uh, you know what I think? I think that um, it's... Uh, He's not your time. <laughs> oh, it's the fact that people can really relate to it. You know, I think it's a metaphor for life. A little bit more a metaphor, bro. Um, but yeah, people can really relate to that because it's similar to what we're going through in society today. You know, uh, people are on the verge of desperation, doing whatever they have to do to survive, and that's when you're not. Who's, who's not? Oh no, you get the big bucks. You call. state that we're in uh, as far as the economy is concerned and uh, you know it's it's a, a bad time right now for a lot of people so people watch that show because you know they can kind of empathize with with the characters in the show so I think that's the thing that people have attached to. Right, I think Norman said it first didn't it? and uh, uh, simple you know you see both sides of the picture you see both sides of the situation you look at these zombies and a lot of them are designed and meant to elicit uh, some humanity from you, even though uh, the, the damn thing's trying to eat your leg off, right? <laughs> yeah, you, know, you see that, you see that, the way they designed the, the, the whole thing, and it's, uh, it's unfortunate. But you know why? They're here for me to kill. <laughs> yeah, I think it is totally right. I think it's about what Romero first established way back when is it's this idea of holding on to humanity. And, and they can't help it. We're the ones who can help it. We're the real zombies. We're the real monsters. Um, but that's enough deep stuff for right now. Um, you know, and I think the other thing is that it, it allows... We've never seen the long-term effects on the world. It's always two hours, and, and we've never actually seen it develop and how it eats away at people, literally and figuratively, and the world. So, um, but we're, we're going to lose you in a couple minutes, right? Oh, he's gonna go. He's got. Uh, check this out, though. He's nominated for best young actor. Yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you a question before you uh, get out of here and, and be 
too cool for school. Uh, so, you know, like when I was a kid, and I'm sure everybody here, when we were all kids, we were dreaming of, of being a police officer and killing monsters. You actually get to do that. Like, how awesome is that as a kid? It's cool for me that I'm living the dream that you guys never had. <laughs> TV, 
you can kind of drop little seeds here and there as you're doing their stuff and hope they turn into something. You know, like, I like when Carol bent down and kissed me uh, in the bed, I kind of like this, you know, and, and I'm trying to push the damaged background story and that's kind of taking off. So, I mean, kudos to the writers for helping us sort of develop our people. So, you know, we got lucky. And you guys may not know this, but um, you actually auditioned for the role of Girl, and they liked your audition so much that they just created the role of Daryl for you. Is that true? Well, it's sort of. Um, I read Merle's lines. I didn't know why I was reading Merle's lines. Um, I guess Frank had an idea. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just I got a call to go in and read those lines. It, I mean, first I was doing the pilot season thing in LA, which I don't know if you know what that is, but it's basically hell on earth. Like, every Ponce actor like, hits LA and tries to get on a TV show. Right. But um, I, I did that and I read all these pilots that were like lawyer pilots and cop pilots and they were just, one was more boring than the next. And then this one popped down and I was like, I'll, just, I'll do anything. And, yeah. just, and um, but then I read Merle's lines and uh, went back to my apartment in Chinatown and got a call that he, you know, this was his new character. So I basically just did car wheels down Chinatown. So, um, but uh, yeah, it's sort of like, what's in the mind of Frank Darabont, I don't think we, He's a genius, so yeah. I don't quite know what was what was. And Michael, we haven't seen too much of you other than the drug induced fantasy this season, but uh, I have a feeling you're coming back with a vengeance in season three. Is that uh, a, a one armed vengeance or one handed vengeance? <laughs> is uh, can, what can you, is there any hints you can give us? Or? I'll be back. Yeah! <laughs> Two to the three films? 
or uh, oh, I'm sorry, what was the inspiration for the first one, uh, specifically the rug? Uh, well, the rug, actually there's a dude here named Tate Steinzen, who's like, who's like, like a fucking genius, but he, he made the rug with me, he made the Nixon masks, and uh, it, there was a group of us, we started a little, uh, uh, sort of a, sort of like a Warhol factory thing in, in New York, um, on Canal, uh, Ken, Canal and Kinmer, I'm sorry, Bowery and Kinmer, and it was called Collective Hardware. There was me, a guy named Stuart, uh, Holly, and Tate, and a bunch of other people. We had a gallery on the first floor. Uh, we had some painters up above us, like, you know, there's Ronnie Catrone, and Eric Foss, and Paul Savigny, and stuff. And we had an edit base up there, then he, in the basement, had a huge monster effect place. Like, and he not only does monsters, he also makes, like, giant saber-toothed tigers for the Discovery Channel, and shit. He's kind of a genius, but th we all came together and made those films, and, um, you know, it's just it's just a bunch of crazy people who know how to make you know different you know different ingredients in films, and we all just threw them together. But uh, that was the, that was the first one, the rub, which I don't know if you guys have seen the rub, but it's uh, I played it for my mom during Christmas, and she goes, "You just ruined Christmas." <laughs> it's not over. Um, and there's a second one uh, about being inside the head of Miles Davis, which I did with some other people, and then um, another one called "Filthy Little Fruit," which I did with some other people. That's about a comedian. He's a lawyer who thinks he's a comedian when he speaks to fruit, and then he meets himself and has a nervous breakdown, and the nervous breaks down, and, and, his, and his fake self walks off and eats the apple and leaves him alone. It, it's, they're all just fucking weird. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so on um, BigBaldHead.com, I can sell these, and all the proceeds I've ever gone to charity. I've never seen a dollar of money. But, um, you know, it's in photographs and stuff. But I'd love to make some more. There's another one called I Was a White Slave in Harlem, which was about a tranny in New York, uh, Marvel Howard Howard, who was kept as a sex slave by Nicky Barnes, who he would play in Iron Man, so his big hair would be going off in the tangent. But, I hope so. It's just an amazing way to do it. I have a lot of coffee, you know. You went through that phase where you're getting all those boring pilot and top ones, and that's when you're doing a tranny in Harlem. I've always done, you know, artwork. I mean, that was yeah. my plan before all this. So, yeah. you know, I keep doing it. And you've been, I mean, you know, I think Walking Dead is really big on the map, but we're not saying, I mean, you've done a huge amount of I have no idea. I've got some really good roles, including this one. I mean, this is my favorite one today, but yeah, I've gotten pretty lucky with. I remember William Defoe told me once, he said, like, all I wanted to be was like a really good cult actor. And I was like, what should you do? And that somehow, you know, they did some new stuff. I'm a, I'm a big fan of gossip. I may be the only one. I don't even know if you've seen gossip. I did all the other than that as well. You guys are fans of gossip too? You yeah. should start a Facebook thing or something. I don't know. Alright, um, here's what we're going to do. They've said that this is the easiest way to do this. If you want to ask a question, let's just start a line right here. That way it'll be fair. And you get to be right here face to face and ask your question. Uh, so, don't all rush at once. <laughs> Give a Rick Grimes for president shirt? Sure. Well, of course you can ask the first question. Come on. All right, what's your name? I'm Charlotte. Charlotte? Hi, Charlotte. You, you have the floor. This is not an AA meeting, sir. Come on. Hi, this is Lori Norman. I'm the president of Rick Grimes. Everyone sort of turned last minute on Rick when they found out that he'd been keeping this from them. Oh. Do you really think that's more of them being upset about that, or are they sort of looking for someone to blame for the huge tragedy they just faced with losing their home and a lot of their friends and all of that? Well, yeah, I think I think it's a uh, a combination of all of the above. When you're living in a zombie apocalyptic world, they are. Am I going philosophical here? <laughs> but there's so many things running through your mind, you know? You're looking to blame people um, for whatever's going on. But then at the same time, you, you know, you tend to displace anger and just so many different feelings you're trying to deal with. But although they may be, you know, false emotions, but you, 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 do, you do the best you can to cope with that new reality. And you, your mind just starts racing on you. You think all kinds of things. I don't blame on Rick, I don't blame even Sophia's going, I don't want to blame Sophia. I don't, I don't just blame people. You're upset, you're angry, and it's hot, and you gotta fight these zombies. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, basically, like, you know, I'm not, 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 I'
you're fucked in like, <laughs> this too. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I think I, I think Daryl's would understood why Rick didn't say it. And I'm like, I, I don't want to hear it. Like, I'm that way. Like, I don't want to go to the doctor because I don't want you telling me that I'm wrong. You know, so it's, you know, we're fucked and we're really in. Yeah, I think I'm glad you asked that question because I think we've all been, like you said, we've been, I just ate your mouse when you said that yeah. word. Yeah, your mouse. I left my ear mouse. I apologize. Oh, my bad. <laughs> oh, bad. <laughs> we're, we've all been working on our heads since that, that episode. We're like, but Lord, you said kill me. Don't do that. What the hell? <laughs> we're all a little, a little angry. I'm, I'm on Rick's side. You guys on Rick's side? Woo! <laughs> you know, you're going to be his right hand man now. Just do it, just do it. I, I think they're going to shit us. I'm just going to ask you. Right, no. What's your name? My name's Liz. Actually, it is about... Um, is, that a, is that a Merle Dixon shirt? Um, this is Dixon's Vixens, actually. Yeah, Dixon's Vixens. Actually, it is about Rick and Daryl. Um, you know, you see him getting a lot closer, you know, handshaking, whatever, maybe back together and things. You know, you may be the right hand man, but... Do you ever think that the group thinks that what Rick is not doing, or what he is or isn't doing is right, would he stick with Rick? Or do you think he would look out for the group as a whole first? Do you think they'll ever come to that kind of how shame would work? I mean, his intentions, I think, are what we're all drawn to. I mean, I, I like the fact that Rick keeps messing up. Like, he keeps, like, his intentions are good, but if he had, like, all the right answers to everything, it would be boring, right on. So I think it's, I think we're with him. Yeah, I, I don't know, you know, the, you know, the Dixons, I don't think, need him either. I don't think that's what it's about, you know. Um, you know, I think we're following his intentions and we're trying to keep the group together and alive, and it's not really, like, yeah, I mean, I know it's a dictatorship and stuff, but, <laughs> it, you know, is it? You know what I mean? So, you know, I, I, I don't know, I think we want him to do well and all of us to do well, but if, if he fucks up, it's, if we get it, then it's not your fault. Great tater shit. Let's that I think that's, this is an amazing thing about the show, is everyone's questions are really analytical. And that's what this show is all about, is, is, is keeping your humanity versus just letting it go and changing the world. And everyone's a flawed hero. And that's, that's, Great questions, guys. You guys are awesome. Yes, sir. What is your name? My name is Michael. How's it going? Hey, Mike. Um, okay, I think when a lot of people, especially older people, think of like, zombie movies, they think of this kind of, you know, B genre. It's, a lot of it is usually, you know, bad, bad storytelling, and they base it just on gore and you know things like that. But The Walking Dead is completely different. It's got great characters. Great storytelling, but it's also got the gore that just you know hard fans enjoy. So, um, when you were approached with this, did you have any idea it was going to be like what it is, like such a great story, great characters, and all that? Or were you kind of did you not know? I guess when you first started, what it was going to be like? The, produ the production quality. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. When we first started, when we first read the first uh, package. Yeah, yeah. Like, did you know it was going to be such a huge hit? Like, like, yeah. Dude, no, but I don't know if anyone ever knew that, but, uh, what I did know, I mean, what I knew was that I appreciate it because this is phenomenal. Yeah. 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 I've yeah. never read anything like this before. Plus, we have Gail and her. Exactly. Yeah. 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 We have Craig Darabont, we have ABC, who, like, constantly does the best show on television. Uh, we have Greg and Tara. I mean, we have you know, superstars. It's like a super team yeah, going yeah, in yeah. with awesome material. So I knew it would be awesome. Whether it be this, I don't think anybody knows that. No, we, we knew the potential was there. We had the potential. But not to be as huge as it is. This is incredible. Well, you never, you never really know how uh, middle America is going to react to the zombie skulls being blown to pieces in front of you and the intestines being drug out of horses and eaten. Uh, you know, it just, you, you, I never fathomed that, really, that that was going to go over quite the way it did. And but it did, and here we are. And that was the same with Boondog Saints, we had no idea. Yeah. And that film didn't even go to theaters because of the comic book movie. And it took us 10 years to make part two because it was a lawsuit. But no, we never know. I'll give you a testament to that, so I posted it on my Facebook that I was doing this with you guys today, and then my grandma 
left a comment. Oh my god, I love The Walking Dead. And this video just like started like just going on and on. My grandmother's in her like 80s and would never ever imagine her like anything designer related. <laughs> so, I mean, I think that is a testament to the show, that if you can make eight-year-old grandmas love zombies, and they're the closest ones to actually being zombies. <laughs> AMC is... And, and, and for one of you guys like watching Mad Men and Breaking Bad and all this stuff, it's great. It's amazing. That stuff on TV. Huh?